Hello again everyone, B1B Flyer here. Welcome to the third video in my From Blister to Battle series. Today we're going to focus on pinning and a little bit of reposing. So I've got my Cyclops that I've cleaned up. Uh, I'll take some pictures of the uh, Stooping Hawk. I'd request to see what it looked like after the filing and uh, all that was done. I'll also post up a video of the real-time filing. It was about 10 minutes or so that it took me to clean this miniature up so that you all get to see what it's it what it looked like uh, in in real time there uh same thing with the cyclops but he's pretty much done there was not a whole lot of uh, lines on this particular model i've got my hot water ready so we're going to do the, that portion first i'm going to dip the cyclops in because the plan is going to be to fix some of this little uh, sway back action he's got going and uh, i want to take this arm off and then eventually at the end i will reposition these arms because there's a little bit of bend where uh, there's not really a joint. So let me just dip this in the water and you can see that in my previous video where I show how to easily remove and bend misshapen plastic miniatures or if you wanna maybe do a little bit of a repose with them. Working with the hot water and then a sharp blade is so much easier than trying to cut it with just a sharp blade and using brute force. That softening up really helps with getting some of that plastic Cut to cut through a little bit easier. All right, so you can see flexible. I've got my blade, and I'm going to remove it right at the shoulder. I'm going to kind of try to not to cut towards myself if at all possible. And if at any time when you're cutting, if you start to feel a lot of resistance, dip it back in the water. Boom, done. Look at how easy that was. Sweet. So while I've got it, the water kind of still working on the heat or the heat effects here, I'm going to straighten that out. And I don't think it's going to work for the waist. Dip him back in real quick. I'll probably have to rebend that arm. It's going to want to go back to where it was, but I'll simultaneously bend that back. All right, now you can see him. I'm trying not to bend it forward at the knee, so I just want it at the waist, and then I'm going to simultaneously hold that arm here. Get a little bit better positioning. You can use cold water and dip it in that to get it to cool off faster. You can also blow on it. There we go. Now he's not leaning back as far. The arm is out where I want it to be. And then uh, you've seen before how I've done the bases where I just flatten out the hex to make it stand level because I'm going to use this plastic base on this miniature. So he's just going to sit and chill out. And we'll let that set. And we'll get to working on the stooping hawk. So the stooping hawk is a good example because it's got just one, one piece. It's got a little stud in between in between the uh, the joint there for the uh, elbow. And then it's got a pre-hole here, which that stud would slot into, and that would create your joint. Still a fairly weak joint. So what we're gonna do first is to strengthen that, is to take out that stud. I'm just gonna use a little bit of a scraping motion and tear it down to even. And then just to make it smooth, I'm gonna hit it with a round file. So now I know I've got a good surface there to mate up to this round round joint here. Also helps if I put it on the right direction. All right, so that takes care of, of what we want to do with that. So now we'll talk a couple tools. I've talked about those small drill bits. I'm gonna use both today just as an example. This will be for antennas later on, but um, I've got a just a Harbor Freight drill, drill bit set, and then I've also got my pin vise. So since this already has a hole started, I'm just going to go ahead and start drilling into that hole, trying to keep it centered up. Now, obviously, I don't want to go all the way through the back of that joint, and it's kind of shallow, so I'm going to work kind of gingerly here, and I like to measure with my fingernail. I don't know if you can see. I take my fingernail, I'll post it right next to the drill bit, and then pull it out, and then bring it back up to see about how far depth I have left. I don't have too much left right now, so I'm just going to go a little bit more. Just let a little more material come out. I'm going to call that good. My favorite pinning material, small paper clips. Cheap, easy to find. You probably have some at your desk. If not, probably at work. I'm not saying steal from work, but a couple paper clips probably wouldn't go missing too much. So I'm going to put that pre-fit in there. That looks good. I'm not going to cut it and put it into the shorter side because there's not a whole lot of material. But what I will do is drill deeper since there's so much more room on this one to make it fit correctly and give myself a good bond. So now comes the, the technique of some folks will use a, a pin. They'll set it in there initially to kind of get an idea of where to put the center is. I'm just going to look at and line up approximately where I think it should be. 
if you want. You can mark it, you can put a scratch down. I know it's gonna be centered, so I'm gonna take my hobby knife and I'm gonna score just a center line just so I have a good idea of approximately where that's going to be. I'm actually going to run it down the bottom because now I want to use that as a point of reference. And now I'm looking at that score mark to see how much of that elbow joint I want to stick out just past that forearm baffle. It's not an exact science. You can be probably more precise with it if, if you wanted to be. I'm happy with that. I'm going to put it in the center. Here's another little trick. Take something other than your drill bit to start a hole. This is a, a round surface. If I if I don't put anything on there, that drill bit's gonna wanna kinda walk around a little bit. And on something like this, it's not as not as critical, but if you're trying to get something precise, you definitely wanna start a pilot hole. Uh, these dental tools are hardened steel and I get a good start at a pilot hole, if you can see that. Let me come close up here. There we go. You can see that pilot hole now, and I did that with just this dental tool. You can use, uh, you can. I don't recommend you use a hobby knife. That's what I wanted to say is don't don't use a hobby knife. But if you have a uh, shoot, I guess a, even a nail or a, a straight pin or something that'll this metal soft enough to where you can get away with that. And then I'll just demonstrate that this works as well. And the technique for that that you just have to be careful that you don't move around too much, and you have to create a stable stable platform. I find that these drill bits tend to be sharper, but you you can't take as much bite because you're really just using your finger friction as the to hold it and I have used a slow speed screwdriver with a uh, adjustable chuck and and use these for that but if you if you get wobbly at all especially with the thinner ones you're gonna snap off the bit inside the hole and you're gonna be wishing you hadn't because these hardened bits are nearly impossible to get out without really taking a whole lot out of it I'll switch back to the pin vise just because I get more leverage out of it Apologize for the shaking. My camera mount is attached to my desk. All right, so now you can see the depth of this hole. Like I said, trick before. Okay, good. Eighth of an inch at least. Just do a little more for good measure. If your drill bit is close to the same size as the pin that you're using, you can also kind of walk it around a little bit to kind of open up that hole just to get that pin to sit in there. So I'm going to prefit and test it. Sure enough, that lines up. Great. Glue. These are what I use. Loctite gel control. There's a blue and a black. The black has a thicker consistency. I like it more for attaching joints because it, it acts as a partial filler. It's not going to magically get rid of some huge gaps, but for little ones, this thing takes care of it quite a bit. This is my everyday assembly glue, mounting, basing, um, doing little mods and things like that. This is what I use more frequently, but for, for filling gaps and assembly on joints that I've modified, I usually use this black glue. So that's what we're going to use. Some glue on there. And I want to make sure it gets into the actual hole, so I'm going to kind of work it in a little bit just to ensure that there is glue all the way throughout. And then I'm going to press it in and try to set it. Okay, that's set. Another handy thing to have around, needles or small push pins. I use these all the time to clean up glue around the edges of joints or around antenna, things like that. Get rid of that excess glue that's difficult to, you know, you can't get a finger in there, you don't want glue all over your fingers, but I can just kind of work that around, help get it into the, the opening, and then it's cleaned up now, so as well, so as it hardens, then it's not gonna create a barricade or a, uh, an uneven surface. We'll let that dry for a moment before we go to attach it. And then what I'll do is set up this cyclops. Same thing as before, we're gonna set a pilot hole. Obviously this shoulder joint doesn't have a whole lot of depth so that'll be the shallow side. I'm just gonna put a mark right in the center. And then I'm gonna get my black drill bit, this little uh, plastic one. It works in the plastic so much better and these are so much sharper, I think, than the normal pin vise ones. Just gotta be careful not to go too deep here. Doesn't need much. And there's gonna be, this is such a flat surface since I made a nice clean cut that 
I'm not really worried about that. I'm just showing you for demonstrative purposes. I would still pin this just because I modded it, but I'm not worried about the strength of the joint as much. I'm gonna sand that down a little bit too. I'll sand both sides down actually. So I'm gonna go with the middle again here. And this will be the primary side, so we'll go deeper. You can see how quickly that bites in there. I've got a, plenty of plenty of take up in that. I'm gonna grab my coarse emery board and I'm just gonna carefully, so I don't hit the rest of the miniature, I'm just gonna run that over it. it does two things, one, it levels it out and roughs up the surface. Do the same thing on this one. No, it's not the best angle, it's the opposite way, but I don't know if I could do it from the underside there. And then just to get rid of any fuzzies or excess material there, I'm just going to hit it with the, the brass brush, clean up the edges. And there we go. All right, so this guy should be dry enough. Now we know we don't need much material for that shallow side on the uh, stooping hawk. So I'm gonna cut it relatively close, about like that. You, we're gonna wanna hold both pieces. I tend to take two fingers on this longer. Well, let's do this. There we go. So now I've got the bit and I've got the wire so it doesn't go flying across the room. There we go. Pre-fit it, make sure we did it right. Lines up. That'll be a solid joint. So we'll get that going. Glue. Another thing I like about this super glue is it doesn't set up immediately. You have a little bit of time to work with it. Not a ton of time, but you have time to kind of move it around and make sure you get a good amount of material contact with glue. Ten to twenty seconds of holding it steady, just for good measure, and then again, come back to that little pin. Oh, look at that! No big deal. Round two. If I don't get a bond after two attempts, I will go in and I will scrape out the excess glue. I'll use a drill to clean out the pilot hole from the side that doesn't have the pin still in it. I'm not worried about the side that has the, the deep end. It's always, if it's gonna be a problem, it's gonna be that shallow end. So I'm gonna move that glue into where I want it. Clean up any areas where it would have spilled out the joint and then let that guy dry. All right, back to the Cyclops. Cool. And you can cut these pins earlier if you want, if you don't want to use the whole, uh, the whole length there. If you want to pre-fit and just do the small pin, you can do that as well. I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to cut it. I know it's not going to be very deep. So there we go. Again, I'm going to clean up that edge just so that it doesn't dry before I get a good bond. And then I'm going to pre-fit this. See it needs a little, little bit of a gap there. So I'm going to take this last little bit off. Caught it with my finger. Don't shoot across the room and now you can see it lines up flush. So all I'm gonna do with this is I will bend it as well with the with the hot water. In fact, I'll do that right now. Because I want it to kind of be sticking out a little more so it looks like he's not doing the Care Bear stare with his 
stomach. All right. And if I change my mind, I can always move it a little bit, but now I can get it level and kind of move it around. Adds a little bit of a dynamic, more dynamic pose. Honestly, if I were to spend a lot more time on it, I would cut him off at the waist and make him turning at the waist a little bit just to make it look a little bit cooler. So maybe for the next time I get a plastic cyclops. It's probably too much glue. I'm just gonna spread it around the surface where I know it needs to be. I'm gonna take that excess and just dab it on the paper towel. So again, you can see how I use these straight pins all the time and you can scrape them off, and, but after a while, if you get done with them, just they're like a few bucks for a box of a hundred or whatever. So now, get that arm where I want it, press it down. Kind of run that glue along the gap. And that's it. So he's looking good, he'll be ready for antennas and some other things. And then lastly, I did want to show a bit of a, just I noticed this, the size comparison. Here's a metal Cyclops on the right. You can see it's almost a head taller. But what I was getting at with the design is you can see the Cyclops, the plastic one here, the head sits back further. So it does look a little odd. That's why I was doing the bending, I noticed that. So if you were wondering why I was trying to bend him forward a little bit, I just thought he looked a little bit off and sure enough he does. So, But that's, that's how you pin and uh, do a minor repose on a plastic miniature. Please post your questions or comments below. Subscribe to our channel. Visit chemospecs.com and our Facebook page. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.